Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. We are now officially live in our Facebook group, getting all set up and ready for you. We have our co-hostess of the challenge, Michelle Barkley, here with us as well. Hey, Michelle, I think you're still on mute. Good morning. I am still on mute. <laughs> good morning. Look at your awesome shirt. I am. I'm all ready for hunting zebras today. All right. I love it. That's the way to, that's the way to show up ready. So um, I think Ruben's going to make you co-host. And in the meantime, we are now right on time to get started. So welcome in, everybody. Um, we are going to kick off this challenge with a bang on a Sunday. Uh, what is probably early afternoon. Uh, let's see if I can pull up our lecture for the day. All right. So, all right, good morning, everybody. This is the three-day EKG challenge, and this course is designed to get you confident with the building blocks of reading EKGs. Um, let me see. Uh, Michelle, are you co-hostess yet? Um, let me see. No, not yet. Okay, um, I'm going to have Ruben work on that. But in the meantime, you guys, in the meantime, as we get started, this three-day EKG challenge um, is designed, like I said, to give you some practice. But the special thing about this EKG challenge is that we have Michelle here with us, who's going to help me do the breakout sessions at the end of each day, which means that if you're on Zoom, which is where we want everybody to be on Zoom, then you're gonna get some extra special uh, attention basically, because we're gonna work with you in a smaller group setting. Now, as far as um, you guys may still need a workbook, and if you do, I believe Tori's here with us. So um, make sure that you reach out to her if you still need the workbook because we will be using that in just about half an hour and this session is being recorded if you want to go back and watch it later which is the best part so uh let's see somebody off mute okay so yes all right awesome so let's get started so I am your EKG hostess of the day my name is Jen Carlquist for those of you who I have not met yet and we're going to take a flying, <laughs> a flying tour around um, EKGs today, but we're gonna go back to the basics and kind of shore up our fundamentals. And I know we have a lot of students in this group as well. And so that's gonna be perfect for you if you're new, but if you're not new, this is also gonna be great because it'll help you look at things in a different light. And um, you, you may actually find that you're picking up little different pearls here and there. Uh, Basma needs the workbook, so Tori will get that to you. Um, so thank you for putting in the chat that you need it, and Tori will get that right over to you. There is a link as well. Um, I'm sure Michelle could probably post it in the chat for us, where you can just get it downloaded uh, straight to Messenger, which is the easiest. Um, but Michelle can get you that link, or Tori can. But our mission for today, should you choose to accept it, is that we are going to do the waves, we're going to do the paper. And we're going to go back and talk a little bit about the conduction system. So that's going to be a fun uh, trip around. Now, um, a lot of you have been asking, hey, uh, I might be busy for part of the session. What's the story? Are you recording these lectures? Because I want to be able to go over them again. Well, it turns out that we are recording all three sessions, but at the end of the session, since we are going to go into breakouts, those can't be recorded. So if you want to make the most and, you know, get a chance to interact with us, definitely try to be here live for the session today, which is going to be about 11 to probably 1215. And then the next two days will be 530 to 630 roughly. Um, Aloha, Muna. It's nice to see you. Welcome in. And then where can I get the workbook? So hopefully in the chat, Tori will be uh, putting that link or Michelle. Um, our little link that we have and also on Facebook as well. There it is. Okay, great. And then are there any guests? Yes, the special guest today is Michelle Barkley, who is a CVICU RN, retired now uh, from working in the hospital, but 
does a lot of teaching still and, and does some industry work, works with children. Um, but her biggest job actually is coaching our students. And she's so good at it. Um, she's the one who makes all our games. She is the one who will cheer you up when you have a bad day, when you think you can't do this. And so you're gonna have a really great time if you're in her session today, I guarantee. It's always a party. Um, she's also responsible for making Heart on a Stick, which is gonna be the prize today, by the way. And um, you'll, I'll show you that a little bit later when it's prize time. Um, but you guys are gonna, one of you guys is gonna win the Heart on a Stick tonight. All right, so who's in the group? Lots of people. Yes, she does make heart voices. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that might come up today, you guys, if you're lucky. So um, who's in the group? We've got EMS, nurses, nurse practitioner, PAs, students, EKG techs, you name it. Uh, we're all represented here. And the great thing is that uh, we don't really, uh, we like to add you know, value to our group by having all the different viewpoints. Uh, and that's why we don't limit it to just mid-level providers. We want everybody to come in. Um, and the greatest news I have about that is that one of the smartest people I know about, um, oh, hey, Sinyan, is that uh, she's an EKG tech over at Chomp. Yeah, she's an EKG and, and she's so smart. She's wicked smart. Oh, Marie, NP from Atlanta, nice. It's nice to hear where you're from. Uh, let's see who else we have. We have an RN in the group. Um, Luna says we're learning from the best. Katie's a PA student. Barbie is an EKG tech. Yeah, EKG techs, they are, uh, you know, I'm telling you, they're the bread and butter of where I work. I, I love them. And they always pick up things that we don't, which is great. Irene from New York, EMT student. Nice. This is so cool. Uh, learning from CRNP moving 20 years to outpatient cardiology. Jessica, you may want to get in touch with me. Um, message me in Messenger. I have some tips for you. Family NP. EKG tech student from California and Flirty. What's up, Flirty from Illinois NP? Cool, all the way from India. So we are all over the world. We have urgent care. We have FNP. Oh my gosh, Rocio, Illinois. We have lots of students here. This is so, so fun. All right, well, thank you for letting us know kind of where you're coming from and what you are bringing as far as your viewpoint to the group. Um, don't even say just a, a medic, okay? That's, we don't say that, KJ, you know that. Um, <laughs> all right. So anyway, um, it looks like, oh, let me see if there's people waiting to get into the meeting here. Let's see. I don't see any people waiting to get in. Hmm. Well, let's talk about the people who are here with us in our challenge. So we do have, as I said, Michelle Barkley. You'll be seeing a lot of her at the end of our session. Sometimes Michelle pops in and she, um, or sorry, Megan pops in and she talks about um, cool cardiology stuff. And then we also have David who makes an appearance once in a while, um, who is in our 30 day EKG challenge. He teaches uh, all of our study halls for EKGs and he'll pop in sometimes as well. So if you see these folks, uh, you know who they are. And of course I'll be your hostess. Um, and a little bit about me, I work in the emergency department and I also work in cardiology and I lecture across the country on EKG related topics. You may notice I'm in scrubs because as soon as I get done with our class today, I'm gonna run and work uh, an ER shift tonight. So I have real world experience. I've been doing this for 16 years. And prior to that, um, I was a paramedic. So um, I bring to you a lot of different viewpoints today as well. And um, I understand the struggle of getting to feel confident and comfortable. So. Let's get to it. What are we covering? Um, new grad RN, nice, Simone. What are we covering today? We're gonna cover actually what a normal EKG looks like, the conduction in the heart, the waves. We're gonna talk about a secret roadmap to how to get good at EKGs. And we're also gonna tomorrow talk about a 10 step system so that you guys know how to approach an EKG with confidence and that way you don't miss anything. All right, now, there is one other announcement before we get started. Um, and that is that we are gonna be giving away a scholarship during this three-day challenge to, to our 30-day EKG challenge, which is something that we do about every month, month and a half. Uh, and it's an opportunity somebody will win 
um, an opportunity to be with us for a whole month in that group and go to all of the live classes. And we in that class kind of take the three-day AKJ challenge and then we just keep running with what we learned and we do a bunch of practice and review and one student who wins will have access. Now, you don't have to be a student. You don't have to be a student to win. Um, we're gonna choose somebody for the scholarship who is the most helpful to other students, just so you know the criteria. So we're gonna be watching in the chats. We're gonna be watching on Zoom chat. We're gonna be watching in the Facebook group and we'll be watching all over anywhere you interact. And if you are super helpful to your fellow people in this challenge, that's the kind of people we want in as a scholarship in our group. And last time uh, we had KJ who won and KJ uh, still even after winning the scholarship, KJ still is so helpful to the students. You may have seen posts in the group, um, always there to help and we really appreciate that. So, you know, take some, take some notes. KJ can always <laughs> tell you how to, how to do it. But in a nutshell, um, let's, get, let's get going. So I'll be announcing that on day three. This is in honor of my dad. That's me and my dad. He passed last year. So this scholarship means a lot to me. And so we will, um, we will definitely be talking about um, how to, you know, later on at the third day, who's going to win. Okay. So this is the secret roadmap, just to let you know. Now, this is basically something I came up with for if you're new and you're like, how do I get confident? These are the steps you take to learn. So step number one is going back to the basics and talking about the waves, the rhythms, the intervals, those numbers, the top of the EKG. And then next, you got to learn what a normal EKG looks like so you can know what abnormal is. And then you got to do what do the leads look at? Coronary anatomy. What are the high risk EKGs? How do I find STEMI? What are the things that look like STEMI but aren't? And then practice in a guided situation where you have help that will um, basically, you have a human person to talk to that can help you kind of work through this. So that's the steps. We're gonna do the waves today and the intervals, day three. We're gonna do some rhythmias. And tomorrow we'll talk about a normal EKG. So you're already gonna get well on your road. Now, if you choose to join us in the 30 day EKG challenge, that's where we do the rest of the stuff. Um, and we do it in a very uh, encouraging environment, just like this. Okay, so back to my EMS roots. I just wanna say if anybody is feeling like EKGs are super hard and maybe you just feel like at some point or have felt that you weren't smart enough to learn them. I too felt like that. Now I know it doesn't look like it here. This was me as a baby medic. I was probably 20 here and I was terrified. You would never know that because right, you always have to put on the calm exterior, but I was so scared because I didn't feel like I knew what I needed to know. In fact, I didn't feel like I, I got what I needed in class. And so maybe you feel that way too. And that's why you're here. And you're like, where can I shore up my weak points so that I too can feel confident? Well, I didn't get here overnight, believe me. And there's still times where I still ask for, for help. So let's just, let's just put some perspective on that for a second. So here, you, here I am, okay, 16 years as a PA, working in an emergency room, cardiology, urgent care. Prior to that, 13 years in EMS. So that's a lot of years. And yet I still have to ask questions sometimes. What does that mean? That means that EKGs are hard. So if you feel like you're struggling, you're not in that bus alone, okay? And everybody comes up to me when I lecture nationally where I go all over the country, people come up after a lecture and they always say, oh, I feel like I'm an imposter or something like that. And so you're just not alone and you never stop learning. That's the reality. Okay, so let's keep clicking on. Now, let's jump into the meat and potatoes. Oh, we have an RNED, nice, Jane. Um, let's jump into the meat and potatoes. Let's give you a 10,000 foot view, okay, of what we're actually looking at with an EKG. And then let's jump down into it and talk about the waves and then talk about conduction. And then hopefully by the end, when Michelle shows, uh, before we go into breakout, she'll show her heart on a stick, which is actually 
the prize for today, along with a couple other prizes, um, she'll she'll show you like, hey, you're this is a 3D object. And the problem is we're trying to figure out a 3D object, what's happening inside of it with one piece of paper that's flat. So right away, there's a disconnect there, right? So that makes it a little bit harder for us. But um, Matt says he's here for hard on a stick. <laughs> Who isn't, Matt? All right, so let's, let's talk about it and give you a little more perspective on the lines, okay? They're picking up the electricity and the electricity is, is made in the heart and pushed up to the chest wall surface. We capture it on the chest wall and into the machine. And what it spits out is gonna tell us a lot of things. It can tell us about the size of the ventricles. It can tell us the problems with conduction system. It can tell us if there's blocked arteries. It can tell us if there's potentially fluid in the sac around the heart. Like there's so many things that EKG can tell us other than just blocked arteries. So when you look at it, it's basically got four components, the heart, okay? You've got the plumbing, which is the vessels. You've got electricity, which is the conduction. And you've got the walls, which is the muscle. And then uh, you've got the doors and the valves. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, Jessica, oh my gosh, you just messaged me. Message me in Messenger with what, you're, what you wrote um, in Messenger. And uh, please just copy and paste it so I can definitely um, get back to you on that. That's so huge. Okay, um, so anyway, when we do testing of the heart, when we do stress tests, we're looking at what's going on in the vessels. When we do an EKG or a Holter monitor, we're looking at the conduction, the electricity. And when we're doing an echocardiogram, an ultrasound, we're looking at those walls and doors, right? So sometimes we need more than one tool to really assess what is happening. Yeah, so you can use this explanation for your patients if you want to, because everyone knows a house and they can easily equate it to the heart. So concept check. This is another cool thing. The size of the waves, of the R waves particularly, right, is talking about the voltage, okay? So the voltage is measuring how tall or how small, okay? If you have high voltage, you might have a big ventricle. A small R wave, you might have COPD. You might have obesity. You might have... ACS, so you might have a pericardial effusion. There's lots of different reasons to have low voltage. Um, Jordan just asked, will the recording be posted after? Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me, Jordan, because it's gonna go from here and we're gonna post it into the guides section at the top of the group. You will be able to watch this section, okay? That will be stored up in the, the guides. But when we go into breakouts, that will not be recorded. So please try to stay live for that if you want the practice. Okay, so um, the waves, they're either positive or negative. They're a positive or negative deflection from the baseline. And it's an electrical event that we're measuring, right? And here's the electrical system. We have the sinoatrial node, SA node, that runs the heart, right? Pumping down to the AV node where it slows down for a minute. And then you're gonna go down into the bundles, down into the bundles with your conduction, which is gonna contract the ventricles. In, in Michelle's session with her, um, you're going to be able to um, get lots of practice on this and um, she's got a great session for you. Okay, so how do we decide normal voltage? There is voltage criteria um, for precordial leads and also limb leads. Um, I can get that to you after Basma, not a problem. Um, or maybe Michelle, you could post a link to it in the, I don't know if you can find it, the millimeter criteria for voltage. I'm gonna tell you though, Basma, what I will, I will tell you two things on that just off the cuff. So number one, if you have a big voltage, then what'll happen is you'll see the R waves touching the next line down often. And if you have a really small voltage, the machine will usually pick it up not always, usually, um, but yeah. And I think Michelle is gonna be practicing that in her breakout session today. So she's gonna, but she'll post it for you, Basma. So anyway, um, okay. So let's talk about the waves. Let's talk about the waves. 
Um, okay, went over here. So uh, let's have you guys put it in the chat. Let's have you guys put it in the chat. What wave is this here? This very first wave. What is this one called? Oh, awesome. Okay, good. P wave. Oh, you guys are on top of it. Okay, now let's do this one. This is just review, but what's this wave here? Nice job, you guys. Facebook and Zoom, you're nailing it. Yep, this is the Q. This one here is the first positive deflection, upright. This is therefore the good R. This one here, negative deflection, is the S wave. And then up here, this should be the last wave we see, and this is called the T wave. Good job, you guys, good job. Okay, if you have an extra wave over here, this extra wave over here, this is called a U wave, okay? So um, that was excellent job by everybody. The P wave is the first positive deflection. Yes, it is. I meant the first R wave's first positive deflection after the P wave. I should have finished my sentence there, Scott. Thank you for clarifying. Um, let me get all these off. Okay, now we are going to do a um, couple rules with these waves. Thank you, Tori, for putting those all in. A couple rules. So first of all, you want the P to be nice and smooth, okay? You don't want it to be notched and you don't want it to be close to the QRS, okay? You don't want it to be close. You want it to be a little bit far away um, just because if it's super close, then you have to worry about things like Wolf Parkinson's white. Now the QRS should be not too tall, not too small. And essentially we're always looking at the size of this, okay? And again, if it's really big, most likely left ventricular hypertrophy. If it's really small, um, yeah. And if it's really small, then most likely we have like some atrial, or sorry, um, like a pericardial effusion or COPD or obesity potentially. So all those things can create the voltage to seem small at the chest wall surface. Now the T wave, it should be upright, shouldn't be pointy. If you have a pointy, T wave, if you have a pointy T wave, what electrolyte abnormality could you potentially be dealing with? What do you guys think? Ah, nice, hyperkalemia, good job. Wow, everybody, everybody got that. So good. Now, if it's pointy, but not too pointy, it's just tall, a lot of times we have to worry about ischemia. So the way to tell the difference between the two is that the hyperkalemia is a little more pointed. Okay, and over here is a U wave, and that should not be there either. So good job, everybody. You guys are all over it. Okay, so the P wave, here we go, right? It's a small deflection and represents right atrial depolarization. I think there was a question on Facebook about this because sometimes the, the repolarization is hidden in the next wave. And I think Esme already answered that for me. So thank you, Esme. So the P wave occurs when the sinus node depolarizes and it'll create a P wave. So the way I remember it is sinus creates P, okay? Sinus creates P. So Sarah says, um, what does peaked, what does it refer to? What does peaked T's refer to? Oh, so sorry, Sarah, let me clarify. So if you have a peaked T, if it's really pointy, then you have to worry about, I'm oh, sorry, uh, hyperkalemia, if it's a little bit blunted on the top, right, and wider, then that's most likely ischemia. So the pointier ones are most likely hyper K, the blunted ones are most likely um, ischemia, okay? So uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean, i.e. tall or pointed. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe Michelle, you can answer that, I can move on. Okay. So how wide should the QRS be? The QRS should be no more than three small boxes, and we definitely are always measuring that, and no wider than 120, okay? The refractory period is also something we wanna talk about as far as EKG terminology. Now, this is an important concept because a lot of the, um, a lot of the problems that we see with like prolonged QT will happen when we have an issue 
and the refractory period. So this is the absolute refractory period where nothing can happen if an impulse comes. And this is the relative refractory period. So if an impulse lands here, then potentially you could send the patient into torsades, which would be bad, one of those lethal arrhythmias. And we will actually be covering arrhythmias on day three. So we'll show you what torsades actually looks like. So just understanding the parts of the T wave is really important. So uh, Mr. Nandy said biphasic T. Um, biphasic Ts, we are not showing them on this screen, uh, but we do have an example of a biphasic T coming up. So let's talk about the cues real quick because people always have some questions about Q waves. And um, KJ, thank you for clarifying. Yes, KJ says on Zoom, in case you're not on Zoom, which all of you hopefully are, tall T waves, but not as pointed are ischemia. Pointed T are usually hyper K. Great way to sum it up, KJ. Okay, hi, Tanya, welcome in. So the Q wave situation, you need to have one third the height of the R wave if it's pathologic. I know, Siri, shoosh, shoosh. Okay, so one third the height of the R wave is the Q if it's bad. If it's smaller than that, it's probably not bad. Now, a Q wave that's wide, that is usually an issue as well. So if it's one third the height of the R wave or it's wide, it's pathologic, meaning bad. But that's why you have to measure it. And here is you measuring it from the tip of the R to the bottom, and you're cutting it in thirds. So here's an example of a Q wave in the wild, so to speak. So I'm just gonna get a pen and draw this for you. You can see that right here, this has got a Q wave in it. This is the whole wave. And when you cut it into thirds, then you can see that this does meet criteria. Now, you do also notice a small Q over here. Now this would not meet criteria on its own, but because it's part of a contiguous set of leads, that's just more ammunition for you to say, oh yeah, there's probably an old inferior infarct. So the machine is reading this as possible inferior infarct age and determined. So when it sees a Q, that's what it writes, if that makes sense to you guys. Let me see if there's any questions. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Michelle, for answering that for me. Okay, so here is, oh, I thought I put a biphasic one in here, but I don't have one. Um, I'll just draw it for you though, really quick since you asked. Um, so biphasic T's look like they'll go up, and down in the same lead, okay? So as opposed to this T wave, which is just upright, it's just hanging out doing its thing. Okay, so you're going up and you've got this beautiful T. It's a little asymmetric, that's what we want. We also have this next one here. So this is normal, basically. This next one over here has a little ST elevation, okay? So we would want a 12 lead on this one because we'd wanna see if there's other ST elevation and depression because we would be deciding if they're STEMI. But also this T wave is a little bit big. Now, here's what KJ was talking about where you would be tempted to think, oh, maybe this is hyperkalemia, but it's not very pointed. So it's probably not, okay? Here's another T wave that's a problem. You've got this T wave right here and it looks like a reverse check mark, reverse check mark. And when you have a reverse check mark, that's most likely come from a big ventricle, okay? So most likely LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy. Now this one is what hyperkalemia looks like, very pointed, very tall. And this is the opposite of here where the T wave is very small, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. All right, now, if you understand that the T waves should all be upright, Okay, so all the T waves should be pointing up. The only two that are supposed to be upside down or inverted are AVR right here and V1. Okay, these are the only ones that are supposed to be inverted. But <laughs> this EKG is literally not following the rules. So um, no, you didn't miss that. We're gonna cover that soon. So um, going back over, you've got you're supposed to have the T waves are supposed to be inverted in ABR and V1, but in this EKG, they're not, they're upright. So that's a problem. And every other T wave is supposed to be upright. So if you scan through this really quick, 
you can see this one's upright, this one's upright, and all of these guys, these guys are all breaking the rules. They're all inverted and they shouldn't be, okay? So they're not following the directions. Now, what does that mean on a grand scheme? It means there's something really, really wrong with this patient. So this patient ended up having uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, um, which is a, a mouthful, but basically this is a very abnormal EKG to show you um, how crazy they can get. So it's exciting. But, but, let's talk, go back a little bit more, like take a step back and go back to the R to Rs. So this is a concept that we use to see if a rhythm is regular or irregular. You can see that this is regular. If you had a bunch of different R waves that marched out, you would decide, okay, that's regular. So it's the distance between this and this R. When you have AFib, it's not regular, but sinus is regular. Now the PR interval, um, and, and we'll be practicing this, but basically you're gonna measure from the beginning of the P, beginning of the P to here. And you're looking for it to be no more than 100, or sorry, 200 milliseconds, okay? It should be 120 to 200 milliseconds. If it is over that, it's a first degree block. If it is under that, we have to worry about other things like Wolf Parkinson's white. Now let's talk about the segments. This is your turn to type in the chat again and fire off what you guys think. I'm gonna put my little heart over the wave and I want you, or the segment, and I want you guys to tell me what the segments are. Okay, so what's this one? This is called, yes, the PR interval. Okay, and this one right here is called the good QRS, excellent. And this one is called, the, the what segment? Yes, good job, the S2 segment. And then this segment here is called the, this is called the QT interval. Nice, good job, that was fun, okay. Um, so speaking of QT intervals, and you guys are just on top of it here in Zoom, I'm seeing all your comments. Um, tell me about the QT interval here, is it long or short? What do you guys think? QT, it's super long, right? 713, that's pretty long. But, but is there a possibility that this could be wrong? If this is right, this is definitely long. Um, anything over 460 is too long. But, but here's a little trick. When you go through and you have artifact on an EKG, it can mess this number up. So what you wanna do is you wanna find a T wave, which is right here, and you wanna draw a line down. And when you do this in real life, what you're looking at is here's the R to R and make a line halfway through. It should be, if it's 713, it should be at least at the halfway mark, but it's not. So this actually was caused by a bunch of um, artifact and it was repeated and it was normal, as you can see here, 444, right? So um, you would think, possibly pace or Kai, but, but there was just too much artifact. And we basically just needed to um, redo the EKG with no artifact. And then you can see it's, it's actually a great EKG as far as the QT. So that was a fun one. Now, there's the numbers that are at the top of this, the uh, EKG that I wanna go over real quick because they do matter, okay? And here they are, here's those numbers. And if you don't use them, I wanna encourage you to start using them. So. This is the QT interval, and there's a cutoff for these. Um, Abby, yeah, the difference between the QT and the QTC is you don't use the QT because it's not corrected for rate. The C means it's corrected for rate and more accurate, okay? Um, so for men, the QT under 450 is, is correct, and women need to be under 460 to be correct. Okay, so let's do a case and talk about why this is so important. We had a 51-year-old female who felt unwell, like the water was running out of her. She had a lot of neck pain. She did um, a bunch of cocaine because she just was in so much discomfort. She drank some alcohol, and then when she didn't feel good, she called 911. So I specifically took the QT off of here, um, but I wanted to show you an example of 
um, a QT that had a problem. So this patient actually went into cardiac arrest in the field. She went into torsades de point. And this is a great opportunity for you to do your trick, okay? Where you can go from the R to R, draw your line, and you can see that this is about halfway. So when you see that, that's a QT of about 500 milliseconds at least and too long. Um, why is there a QT longer in women? No idea. It just is. It's just one of those things that just is. Um, but this lady had prolonged QT and this put her at risk for her torsades, which caused cardiac arrest. So the QT is always important to look at and you can always double check it with that little method I just shared with you. Okay, so um, this is her EKG. So she had cardiac arrest. She was on a bunch of QT prolonging medications. And then here she is taking off all the medicines. Now her QTC is 441 and it's normal. So hers was medication induced. So we always need to look at the medication list to make sure. And also yes, cocaine can uh, prolong the QT as well. So when we're talking about deciding rhythms, I just wanted to throw a few more pearls at you real quick. Um, so three, the three questions you're gonna ask yourself, fast versus slow, wide versus narrow, and regular versus irregular, okay? Fast versus slow, wide versus narrow, regular versus irregular. If you have the answers to those three questions, you can pretty much determine any rhythm. And we'll be practicing this on day three. So I want you to remember these three questions, write them down somewhere, because they're gonna be super important. What's also important is knowing the conduction. So let's go through that really quick. And I know that we're gonna practice this in the breakout session as well, um, but let's go over it. So the conduction is something like this. So you go from the, as we said earlier, um, so we're gonna to go to the SA node, down to the AV where we're gonna stop a little bit. Then we're gonna go down the bundles, but each of these have their own time, okay? So the SA node runs the heart at 60 to 100. The AV node runs 40 to 60. The um, bundles run 20 to 40 and the little cell just down here in the bottom of the heart runs about zero to 20 beats per minute. So let's see what that translates to when you have in, in a rhythm strip. So if you go over here to this rhythm strip, if you remember that sinus node makes P and you do not see a P, then you know the next person down is in charge. The next person down is in charge, okay? Oh my gosh, Michelle is posting the link. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> You're amazing. So um, anyway, there's no P wave here. So what rhythm is this? If it's 40 to 60 and there's no P, what rhythm is this? This is a junctional. Good job, Barbie. Good job, KJ. Okay, let's do the next one. What's this one called? This is wide, regular. Wide and regular. Okay, good, Sultana. Um, good job, Barbie and Sinron. So yes, this is ventricular. Very good, PS. Nice. Good job, Willie Mead. And we know that because it's slow and wide, okay, slow and wide. And now this one is when one of the little heartbeat or little heart cells down here is trying to run the whole heart. And this is called an agonal rhythm. It's called agonal, good job, Barbie. Barbie, I'm wondering, um, you are awesome. Okay, so that's kind of sums up the conduction. Somebody was asking about the paper and good job, Irene. So a small box is, um, 0 0.04 milliseconds and the big box is 0 0.12 uh, or 0.20. And Michelle will talk about this in the breakout session. Um, and then you guys were also asking about the rule of 300 counting rate. This is something that we will do just to double check to make sure that our machine is calculating correctly. And this is called the rule of 300. And so what you do is you find an R wave, if you're going to use this, that lands on a big line and then go the next big line over next big line over, and if it lands here, it'll be a heart rate of 300. If it lands here, it'll be a heart rate of 150. Um, here, it'll be a heart rate 100, here 75, and so it lands here, so it's 64, roughly plus or minus. So that's kind of how to use this. Uh, what is escape rhythm? Um, that was what we saw earlier, where we saw like an agonal rhythm. Um, that's a form of an escape rhythm. 
Okay, so now I was trying to rush through that to get on time. So we have plenty of time for our breakout sessions. So what we're gonna do is, sorry, I feel like I'm a sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me, what we're gonna do is Ruben is gonna move us into the breakout sessions and then we're gonna practice our workbook. So grab your workbook and half of you will be with Michelle, half of you will be with me. And um, Michelle just said, this is great. Escape is when someone else in the electoral system starts the rhythm. I love that. That's so great, Michelle. Um, so, 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 uh, what we're going to do, Ruben, let me make sure he knows we're ready to go to breakouts. He's going to move us, us to breakouts. Okay, I think we're back in the room. I'm waiting for Jennifer. I still have a electric, a, I have a, still have a lead on my body, my room. Hey, you're back, Michelle. We're back. I didn't know okay. if Ruben was bringing us back or if we were coming back. <laughs> yeah, he, um, I think we have to coordinate that better tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, um, yay. So I think that um, we're still waiting for like half of our folks to come back. They're probably still in my room. I think that was almost closed. But um, yeah, I wanna make sure you can show the heart on a stick that we have time for you to oh, show heart on a stick. I do, I do. I have, this is a little bit bigger one just cause that's one of the very first ones I made. So this is heart. What we mean by heart on the stick is I leave a hole in the bottom. Um, on the new ones, I actually put it in the, in the descending aorta. So you can- Oh, put, so cool. Yeah. So. Um, I don't mail the stick just because I'm afraid it'll get broken, but it is literally, my husband just bought me a quarter inch dowel. That's all it is. And the reason, and you don't have to use it. I just like it because it's easier to hold the heart and I don't obscure it. So the way I made these is they're stitched out. You can kind of see they're, the coronary arteries are all color coded the way we like to do them. This is the smaller one. This is the littler one here. So this is the one I'll, I'll send out to everybody because it's about my hand size here. A little bit bigger than my hands. Well, we're going to give that away as a prize. So if you guys want to win that, um, what you want to type in is hashtag Michelle. Um, put that in the Facebook feed for me, if you don't mind, if you want to win. Um, and I'll be drawing the winners later and announcing. But in the meantime, um, definitely put it in the uh, Facebook chat, not the Zoom, because I'm not going to be able to see that later when I'm at work. So uh, let's do this. So welcome back. Um, we actually had a great time. Michelle, was there any take homes from your uh, breakout session that you wanted to share? Um, I think everybody understood. It. it sounded like everybody understood pretty well. The, um, the PR intervals, we did PR interval, QRS intervals, um, width, QTC. Um, we, we touched on ST segment. And um, what else did we do? We did we redid the junctional, make sure we knew what the junctionals were, cool. uh, all that. Uh -huh. All right. Well, we had fun in our group too. We did lots of practice and um, it was it was so much fun interacting with everybody. So thank you for coming on Zoom with us. Um, so I did want to tell you guys that we, um, the key is pattern recognition. And I was hoping that you all can really see the power in starting to put down the layers right together of all of this knowledge and being in the breakout sessions. Was that helpful? Type in the chat for me if the breakout sessions were helpful. Oh, um, put it in the Facebook feed if you don't mind so I can draw the winner. Scott says hard on a stick. Um, yes, this does help. Okay, good. Because we're going to do these breakouts again the next two days. So now you kind of get an idea how it goes. It's a little funky in the beginning, right? But once we get going, we're good and we'll have the, the same session. Um, tomorrow where we'll do some learning and then we'll do the breakout sessions. And again, what I'm really looking for, just to let you know, this next couple of days, I'm looking for you guys to help each other. Um, I can't always be all the places all the time. And I'm hoping that you guys are helping each other. Um, and that's who I'm going to pick the scholarship winner. So um, be helpful, be kind to your fellow students and um, trying to drink from a fire hose. Yeah, Scott, I know this is, this is a lot for sure, but we had so much fun with you guys. Um, we're also gonna give away these, a couple of these today. So these are the RCAT window badges. So in addition to Michelle's heart on a stick, we have three of these. So if you would like to win these, they just go on your badge. They're a nice little tool. Um, you can put RCAT, hashtag RCAT, R-C-A-T. 
Um, so we don't actually have those zebra shirts anymore, unfortunately. They were made for our instructors and that's the only people that have them. And unfortunately, uh, we don't make them anymore. But um, can we get the answers to day one to fill in? I think I have those, I'll post them a little bit later. And um, cool, I think, are, do you have any questions, anybody, before we let you go for day one? Where are the replays gonna be? They're gonna be up in the guides and you can watch them then. I know this was a lot, but you can definitely replay. So um, Michelle, I will see you tomorrow at 5.30 PST, 7.30 uh, Central Time. And um, Sarah says, I want to come to work with me tonight. I'll be at my work. I'm going to the ER right now. And we really appreciated Michelle. Can we all give Michelle a hand for um, her just amazing everything? Let's just thank Michelle for being here today on a Sunday with us. Yay. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. We, we love thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so oh, also. We um, love you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. There, somebody's asking Thank for the you. link. It's the same link every day, same link, okay? And it's in the event section of every event. So just so you know, that's where it is. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank Bye, guys. Bye-bye.